Bob Babbitt here at Challenge Denmark inaugural event with Ben Powell, one of the experts on the Danish triathlon scene. Pretty exciting event to come to Denmark, Ben. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's nice for Challenge to be back in Denmark after being here a few years back and now taken over by Ironman. So it's fantastic to see Challenge back in Denmark. So we got our pro guys in the water, and beforehand we're thinking Danish athletes, Martin Jensen and some of your other top Danish athletes. You guys have have really developed a lot of great swimmer bikers yeah absolutely Denmark's renowned for swim bikers you know and we have Thomas Strang in there the young 21 year old Martin Jensen as we can see leading it out and also we have Henry Hulelund who's a you know fantastic Danish athlete for the men as well what I like about this distance you have someone like Thomas who's coming from ITU and stepping up to a longer distance then you got some guys who really have Ironman background coming down to this half distance it's a nice little melting pot of both distances yeah absolutely and it's it it acts as a good training event for those ITU short distance athletes like Thomas to get the speed in, you know, and the endurance. And same for the women, Michelle Vesterby in the red goggles, one of uh, Denmark's greatest female triathlons. She's been fourth, uh, fourth, and twelfth and thirteenth in Kona. Talk a little bit about the women's side for for Denmark. Yeah, Denmark has a fantastic depth of women. You know, you have Hella Fredriksen, you have Camilla Pedersen, you have Michelle, and they really know how to race. And if, for Michelle to be racing in her home town of Henning here, it's fantastic for the sport of Denmark. Well, and, and for someone like Michelle, people think of her as someone who can handle longer distances. She's better at Ironman. Seems like she runs the same type of pace for a half or a full in the run portion that that she has a hard time going fast. She's training with Luke Van Leerde now, Ironman champion, two-time Ironman champion, and it, she looked leaner to me than I've seen her look before. Yeah, Michelle is the Danish diesel as we like to call her, you know. <laughs> she just has this one pace that she can do all day long and as we see her there on the swim just trailing Mary Beth Ellis this is a fantastic event for Michelle to just test test the run speed I guess. Yeah and the other side of this is we all we talk about the elites a lot the age group side is what makes triathlon so successful. We're talking about people who are in this case this is our women age groups, these are moms these are working women who balance their training and fitness with being, being a mom and being a working woman. Talk a little bit about because I know Hella is very involved with working with age group women as well. Yeah, yeah, you know, age group in general, women, men, they're the bread and butter of the sport. And I think for professionals to step down and consult and engage and mentor age group athletes in general, it helps the, you know, sport grow. Like we see here in front of us, you know, they're not the elite level of the sport, but they get in there, they get it done and they, they enjoy it. And it's a community side of the sport that we need for the sport to grow on a global level. And the other side of that is, here's our elite guys coming out of the water, and the sport has gotten so fast now, you cannot have a weakness, not just swim, bike, run, but transition. How important has a transition become in becoming the best of the best? Yeah, it, it's it's critical, you know, and I think you see the top 1% of, of the, you know, professionals, they really have the transitions dialed in, you know, they know the routine from when they get into the transition to when they get out, when they take the goggles up, is it goggles up first, is it hat off, is it zip down, they have that routine dialed, and as we see here, you know, some, they panic, they struggle, and they can lose a lot of time in transitions, so you really, really have to get it dialed in and get it you know known what you're going to do in and out and get it get on with it yeah, and it's a minimalist and days gone by people would go into a changing tent not anymore it's let's say I grab our aero helmet get it on my shoes are already on the pedals and let's see how quickly we can get out yeah and you see with these four lead guys here that have Jensen, Bockel, Fachbach and Thomas Stranger, it's critical for them to get in and out as a group. You don't want one person to get away in that section. And as you can see there, you know, the speed is, is, is optimal, but at the same time, you need to be very careful as Jens Toft of Denmark comes in there. Well, and for him, right now, and we're going to see some other guys too, they're in no man's land. When you come out and you don't have uh, this athlete comes in, he's going to be riding on his own. And mentally, how tough is that knowing there's a group a little bit in front of you? Yes, yeah, solo is solo is the toughest, you know, and you really have to be prepared for going it alone. If you come out of the swim by yourself, it's 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 harder than having, you know, two or three people in a group where you can just feed off, you know, you know, psychologically you can take a lot of positives and negatives away from that and it's yeah as you see this athlete now by himself it's it's a lot of ground to make up and I think this is Christian Monk Nielsen of Denmark and you know he has a lot of work to do and he will know that though you know he knows his level and it's about getting the head down and just not thinking about anything
anything other than chasing. Yeah, and we have our women coming in now, and a little bit of a surprise first person out of the water. Yeah, for sure. Catherine Jameson of Great Britain, you know, she was a late entrance to the race. I think she wasn't on many of the start lists, so everyone was wondering who Catherine was. But, you know, a good all-round athlete, but I think as we see Mary Beth Ellis here, as you know, Bob, Mary Beth is one of the best in the world. She's won eight Ironman titles. She's simply the, the honey badger. Uh, and she just switched coaches. She was with Siri Lindley. She went back to her coach, Brett Sutton, who she had so much success with. Michelle Vester B has, had a great swim. The other side of it, the challenge is one of the few races that has a 20-meter draft rule. And I know for someone who's a good cyclist like Michelle, she knows the people in front of her can't be sitting in. And, right? That has, Mentally, that has to be helpful. Yeah, for sure. If you know, if you're a strong cyclist, the 12 meter rule, which is has been the norm, there's an advantage to sit in a 12 meter. So if you come in a pack and you're a strong cyclist, it's hard to get away from people with 12 meters. But with 20 meter rule, as we see here today, it really allows the strong cyclists to really, you know, ride their own race and, and potentially get away. So we talked about fast transition. <laughs> now we're looking at what we would call maybe a little bit slower. Putting socks on, you don't see that very often. Then also putting a shirt on. Uh, looks like a cotton shirt yeah. after having a wet body putting a helmet on first and then deciding to pull on oops wait a second where's my oh my shirt I forgot to put that on <laughs> yeah you know it's, I guess it's all personal and it's all choice but uh, I think this athlete Eloise Crawley she's actually from Wales in the United Kingdom. Wait a second, it's like you, she's from Wales? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, is that what she's you coaching her? <laughs> no, she's from <laughs> Wales. So the, Eloise obviously was fearing the cold there, I think. I love that.